What we're going to be talking about today is projectile motion. Now in order to really understand projectile motion, we really need to consider the relationship between vertical and horizontal speed. Let's have a look at a little thought experiment. We have two spheres. First of all, we have one on the left here, which is sitting on the side of a building, 10 meters up into the air. We have another one, which is magically floating in the air. We're going to release both of them at exactly the same time. Now, as a catch, though, on the sphere on the left, what I'm going to do is uh, I'm going to give it some horizontal speed. So I'm going to push that horizontally. So let's give it a speed and let's call that speed just V. OK, now, which one of those is going to hit the ground first? What do you guys think? Well, it turns out they both actually hit the ground at exactly the same time. The trajectory of the one on the left is going to be a parabola. It's going to look something like this. It's going to hit the ground over there, whereas this one here is going to go down like this. Now, it's pretty stunning that they both hit the ground at exactly the same time in the absence of, uh, of air resistance. Okay, folks, so let's have a look at an example question over here. We have an object which is being pushed horizontally with a speed of two and a half meters per second from a height of 40 meters. A, how long is the object going to fall for and determine how far does the object travel horizontally? Okay, now in order to answer that, we need to remember that horizontal and vertical motion are completely independent. In fact, this object travels along a, um, a path. It is going to do, perform two motions at the same time. One will be going straight downwards and then the other one will be moving horizontally at a constant speed of two and a half meters per second. So let's focus on the first one and then de to determine how long is the object going to fall for. In order to do that, we're going to need to employ the Suvat equations. And um, I'm going to use that S is equal to ut plus half a t squared. Now, in this case, there's no initial vertical space. So this is really, really important. If S is the distance traveled in the vertical direction, this over here, u will be the vertical speed, which initially it's zero. In fact, I'm going to give them a little subscript just to differentiate them. So I'm going to give them a little y over here. So this is zero, so this can go. The total displacement traveled in the um, vertical direction is 14 meters, in the vertical direction only, of course. So it'll be 14 is going to equal a half. The acceleration due to gravity on Earth is 9.81 multiplied by t squared. So we can go ahead and rearrange for t squared, which is going to give us 14 times 2 divided by 9.81. And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to square root everything. So I'm going to get rid of this square sign and I'm going to square root this. And if I plug this into a scientific calculator, I'm going to get about 1.689. So let's just um, leave that as 1.7 seconds up to two significant figures. So our object is going to be in the air for 1.7 seconds. So let's work out the second part of the question, which is to determine how far does the object travel horizontally? In other words, what is this distance here going to be? Now, it's important to know that there's no reason for this object to use any of its horizontal velocity. The reason for that is that the only force acting on the object at any point of its flight is the weight which is just acting straight downwards. So at this point, the object will be moving at two and a half meters per second. At this point over here, it'll be moving horizontally at two and a half meters per second. And even when it lands, it will still be moving at two and a half 
meters per second horizontally. So we can work out the, uh, the horizontal distance traveled by simply multiplying the uh, horizontal velocity multiplied by the time of flight, which we already have. So our horizontal velocity is two and a half meters per second. Let's just double check that. Yep, two and a half meters per second. And our time of flight, which we have just worked out, is 1.7 seconds. And if we multiply those two out, we're going to get a horizontal distance of 4.25 meters. 4.25 meters. Okay, folks, so hopefully those problems make sense. If there are any questions, please feel free to drop a comment down below and please consider subscribing.